Hello there, friendly neighbors, and welcome back to our channel. Nova woke up just in the nick of time. Just right when I started filming, she decided to grace me with her presence. And now she's decided to no longer grace me. She doesn't want to be held, so she's going back on the floor. That's okay, we just need a little bit of a ferret cameo. Okay, goodbye. Today we're going to be talking about something that I mentioned as my seventh rule for kibble or commercial foods, and that is the nutritional or guaranteed analysis of a brand of food. In my first video in this series where I go over the rules of commercial food, I mentioned that it's very important to compare both the guaranteed analysis and the ingredients list, because these two things work together to give you the information that you need. This video, I'm just gonna be talking about the guaranteed analysis, but next video is where I'm gonna start talking about the ingredients list. So definitely make sure that you watch that video when it comes out, because I don't wanna accidentally lead you astray, because it's very important to connect both of these two things. Before we get too into the video, I'm gonna go over my usual disclaimers for this series. First off, make sure that you're watching all the videos in this series. Every single video has important information in it, and I would hate for you to accidentally miss out on that and then accidentally end up with a brand of kibble that is not suitable for ferrets. So please don't just take this one video, make sure you are watching all of them. Nova's about to be a little bit noisy in the background. I'm sorry, I have four ferrets, this is my life. Second disclaimer is that I am not a vet scientist or a nutritionist. I am just someone who is passionate, attempting to compile all the research that I've done to help other ferret owners, just like you beautiful people watching my video. I do have sources for all of the information that I'm giving sprinkled throughout the video and down in the description below that you can click on for yourself if you want to double check what I'm saying or read the entire thing. Now that I've got all those disclaimers over with, let's get into the video. The first thing we need to talk about is what is a guaranteed analysis? A guaranteed analysis is a guaranteed minimum percentage of the crude protein and crude fat, and a guaranteed maximum percentage of the fiber and moisture in a type of pet food. A guaranteed analysis is something that is going to be available on any type of food that you are looking at, whether it is a canned food, a kibble, an air-dried, or a freeze-dried food. Basically, a guaranteed analysis just explains what's in the food you're feeding on a nutritional level. It's really important to understand that when a nutritional analysis says crude fat or crude protein, it isn't referring to only animal fat and protein. Crude means a breakdown of these things on a chemical level. Because of that, it includes plant and animal fat and protein. There are plenty of plants and carbs that contain high levels of fat and protein, and those do contribute to the amount of fat and protein listed on the guaranteed analysis. As obligate carnivores, ferrets aren't able to process protein and fats that come from plants. So because of that, these fats and proteins are essentially just wasted. If you're looking at a bag of food that says it has 35% crude protein, but it has a really high amount of carbs, a large chunk of that 35% protein is going to be these plant proteins that ferrets can't digest. This is exactly why it's so important to be comparing the nutritional analysis and the ingredients list. I am going to be talking a lot more about this in my next video where I talk about the ingredients in commercial foods, but I still just wanted to put it in here just a bit so you guys have a bit of an understanding of that going into this video. So now that we've got all of that over with, let's actually talk about the nutritional requirements of ferrets and what you should be looking for on a guaranteed analysis. I've said it once and I'll say it again, we don't know the nutritional requirements of ferrets because it hasn't been studied. But based on what we've been feeding ferrets for the last couple generations and the limited studies that we have done on their nutrition, we do have a couple of ideas and some starting points that we can go off of. There are four main things that are gonna be listed on every guaranteed analysis. Crude protein, crude fat, fiber, and moisture. And it is important to look at all four of these things. So let's break all of them down. The first thing listed is normally gonna be the crude protein. Protein is basically the building blocks of the body and it is important to every single living thing to have protein in their diet. Along with that, protein contains unique amino acids that ferrets either can't produce for themselves or just don't produce enough of for themselves, so they need to get it through the food that they eat. Taurine is a good example of this. There are so many different opinions on the amount of crude protein that ferrets need in their diet because, once again, it hasn't been completely studied yet. Some people say as high as 55% and some people say as low as 30%. My opinion on it, based on my research and my experience, is, um... It depends on the ferret. 
That's literally the most boring, unsatisfying answer in the entire world, I know, but it is my opinion. I think a good starting off point is a food that has 35 to 40% crude protein on a dry matter basis, and then kind of just working from there. Each ferret is unique and different, and each ferret reacts to food differently, just like we as human beings all react to food differently. Age, general health, lifestyle, energy levels, all of this affects how your ferret is going to respond to a certain type of food. If you notice that your ferret has decreased energy levels, a dull coat, significant weight gain or weight loss that isn't in relation to seasonal changes, keep in mind seasonal changes, these are all signs that I think you should be upping the amount of protein in the food you are feeding, either by feeding a completely different food or feeding more freeze-dried, air-dried, or wet food alongside it. So although we don't have a number of exactly how much crude protein ferrets need, we do know that they should absolutely not be getting any less than 30% crude animal protein on a dry matter basis. Less than 30% has been linked to poor developmental health and an increased chance of metabolic diseases. Ferrets are obligate carnivores, that's what it comes down to. They really do need animal protein in their diet. It just depends how much animal protein, depending on the individual ferret. Crude fat is the next thing that you're likely to see on your guaranteed analysis. Fat is extremely important to obligate carnivores like ferrets. It provides essential fatty acids, it is necessary for the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, and most importantly, it is where ferrets get most of their energy from. Just like protein, fat is something that a lot of different people have different opinions on. And just like protein, I'm gonna give my personal opinion. My opinions align with Kim Schilling, the author of Ferrets for Dummies Opinions. In her book, she says ferrets should be on a diet of 20 to 40% crude fat, and I agree with her. But Kenya, 20 to 40%? Gee williker. That's a real big difference between 20 and 40. What the heck? That's definitely exactly how you uh, asked that, by the way. Right, Mandy? You have no understanding of your subscribers. Well, that's just hurtful. Like I said, the main reason that ferrets need fat in their diet is because it provides them with energy. And if there's one thing I know about ferrets, after owning ferrets of a very wide variety of age ranges, it is that their energy levels change significantly depending on their age and health conditions. A senior ferret like Nova that sleeps pretty much all day and gets up for maybe three hours out of the entire 24 that she exists on this plane of existence uses a lot less energy than Lyra, my ferret kit, who literally never sleeps. Except for right now, but I'm not gonna jinx that. I will jinx it for you. Let me down so I can wake her up. Please don't do that. If you switch your ferret's food and you notice a significant decrease in their energy and a significant decrease in their weight, this means that you're feeding them a food with not enough fat, definitely switch it to something with a higher fat content. Or if you switch your ferret to a food and you notice that they're gaining way too much weight and their energy level hasn't really changed, you know that you are probably at an all right level of fat to begin with and the new food that you're feeding them probably has a little bit too much fat in it. Just to elaborate on that weight gain and weight loss that I'm talking about, keep in mind that if you are going from a low quality food to a high quality food, you are very likely to see a weight fluctuation in your ferret and that doesn't necessarily need to be considered a red flag. When my girls were on a low quality kibble, they were pretty underweight, but when I switched them to a higher quality diet, they gained that weight back and they were at a more healthy level. So what I mean when I'm saying significant weight gain or weight loss, I mean to an unhealthy level. I talk about this at the end of the video too, but your vet is someone who's gonna be able to tell you if your ferret is at a healthy weight or not. So if you're concerned, it might be worth going to the vet or just talking to them about it on your next annual. And again, when it comes to the weight gain and weight loss of ferrets, make sure you're paying attention to seasonal changes because ferrets do change their weight depending on season. The third thing you're gonna look at on the guaranteed analysis is the amount of fiber. Ferrets' bodies can't make use of fiber because it is a carbohydrate. And like we said earlier, ferrets are obligate carnivores. They have no use for carbs or fibers or plants or fruits any of this stuff. It doesn't do anything for their bodies. According to most sources, you should absolutely not be looking at a food that is any higher than 5% fiber on a dry matter basis. Personally, I think that it should be even lower than 5%, somewhere closer to between 1 and 3%. 
In Husbandry and Medicine of Ferrets, the author talks about how they theorize that anything higher than 3% fiber results in digestive upsets, which can cause ulcers, bowel neoplasms, a bunch of stuff that we just don't want. So I would personally look for something that has less than 3% on a dry matter basis. The biggest indicator that the food you're feeding is too high in fiber is if your ferrets have the runs on it. So if you notice your ferrets have the runs and there's a slightly high fiber content, there you go, you figured out why. The fourth thing that you're going to look at on the guaranteed analysis is the moisture content. And that is something that plays a very big role in the next segment we are going to be jumping to. Dry matter basis. Now that we have a bit of an understanding of how much protein, fat, and fiber we should be looking at in ferret food, it's time to break down a term that you probably heard me throwing around, dry matter basis. All of the percentages that I just went over and any of the ones that AFCO outlines are calculated on a dry matter basis. Dry matter basis is the amount of a nutrient that is in a type of food when water is mathematically removed from the equation. Although water is extremely important to all living things, it does not actually provide any nutrients, which is exactly why it's important to mathematically remove it from the numbers you are looking at if you're trying to compare different brands of food. Every type and brand of food has a different moisture level, and that different moisture level is something that's going to greatly affect the actual percent of nutrient that is in a food. By calculating things on a dry matter basis, we can essentially just put them on the same playing field, and that gives us a way to compare them in a fair way that accurately reflects what's inside of them. That's a lot of words that I just threw out. I'm gonna give you guys an example to show you what I mean. In order to figure out the dry matter basis of a food, you uh, unfortunately have to do a little bit of math. Thankfully, if you are gay like me and bad at math, there are tools you can use that do it for you. I will have a link to the dry matter basis calculator that I am going to be using in the description below. As well as that, there's a little explanation of the math that it's doing if you are curious to understand how it gets these numbers from these numbers. So let's do an example here of how you can calculate a dry matter basis. I'm gonna be using this can of Fancy Feast cat food and we're gonna be comparing it with this bag of Frisky's dry cat food. Please note, neither of these are foods that are appropriate for ferrets. I am purely just using them as an example. Don't feed either of these to your ferrets. When we look at the guaranteed analysis of both of these foods prior to the dry matter basis calculation, we can see that the Fancy Feast wet food has a crude protein of 10% and the Frisky's dry food has a crude protein of 30%. So looking at just these numbers, the assumption would be that the kibble has more protein in it, but we're gonna prove that that's false. So let's look at the wet food first. We're gonna plug that 10% crude protein in along with the 78% moisture that the guaranteed analysis says it has in it. By mathematically removing the moisture in this food, we can see that it actually has a crude protein percent of 45.45 crude protein. I'm bad at math, but I do know that that number is higher than 10. Now let's do the same for the Frisky's dry food. So we plug in that 30% crude protein as well as the 12% moisture, and we can see that this food actually has a crude protein percent of 34.09. So based on a dry matter basis, we can see that the wet food actually has a higher amount of crude protein than the dry food. And you wouldn't have known that unless you had been super smart and done some math, by which I mean, put the numbers into a website and let the website do the math for you. Cause we don't do math on this channel except for ferret math. So as you can see, based on that example, doing a dry matter basis calculation is super important when you're comparing brands of food and making sure that the food you're looking at falls into that 35 to 40% crude protein, 20 to 40% fat and less than 5% fiber. So, the conclusion to this video is just that all ferrets are different and we don't really have an exact understanding of the nutritional requirement of them. Because of that, we need a starting off point and we need to branch off from that based on what we see in our individual ferrets. What works for someone's ferrets might not necessarily work for your ferrets, which isn't to say that you can't get recommendations from other people. Feel free to get recommendations from other people, but with the understanding that your ferret might not do great on that particular food. And that's okay, because just like people, all ferrets are different. And we love it when people and ferrets are different, okay? I would really be sad if I had four Novas. As much as I love Nova, I love having a Lyra that's got way too much energy. Oh my god, speak of the devil and she'll poop in her litter box.
Listening to your vet can also be really helpful when it comes to finding out if the food you're feeding is or isn't appropriate. Your vet's going to be able to measure the general health of your ferret relatively easy and you can use that assessment to adjust what type of food you're feeding. If you take your ferret to the vet and the vet says that your ferret is really underweight, then you know that you can make adjustments according to that. Also, make sure to keep in mind that rotational feeding, which is something I talked about last video, plays a really big part in all of this. If you're feeding a kibble that you think is a little bit too low in fat or protein, instead of completely switching what brand of kibble you're feeding, you could always just feed it alongside a wet, air-dried or freeze-dried food that does have a higher amount of fat and protein, and what that'll do is just up the amount of fat and protein that your ferret is eating. It's another reason that I'm super pro-rotational and variety feeding, but I already talked about that last video, so go ahead and watch that video if you haven't already. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Like I said, I'm going to be talking next week on the ingredients in ferret kibble. Disclaimer, it is possible that that one will take me two weeks to put out instead of one week, so I might not be back here next Friday, but we'll see what happens my life is kind of chaos right now. Look at this, we have Lyra in here too. You guys got three of my four ferrets this video. That's crazy. That's crazy stuff. Oh, I love you too. I will see you guys next time when I talk a little bit more about ferret kibble. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Goodbye.